And the first thing we do in chapter two is we get away from how to collect the data. This is the ways we collect the data. And we move on into how to organize it and eventually how to summarize it. So we're going to talk about what's called a frequency distribution right now. Are there any questions before we get going on this? I asked you to look at this classroom and to count the number of brown-haired people and the number of black-haired people and the number of blonde-haired people and put it in a list, this is probably how you'd do it. You'd probably do blonde, brown, black, and count them up and put them right here. 7, 15, 12. You'd probably do something like that, wouldn't you? This is one of the simplest versions of a frequency distribution that I can think of. This is a frequency distribution. We're going to make it a little more specific for our, our reasoning, but this is the idea. You have what are called classes, just groups, and you have counts, frequencies. A frequency is how often something occurs. Seven blonde people, that, blonde people occurred seven times. Brown-haired people, 15 times. So these are our classes, and these are our frequencies. This is a frequency distribution. We're going to talk about that right now. You know, I think the way that I'd like to do this with you is we'll actually create a frequency distribution right now. And as we do it, I'll be giving you the definitions and things like that and show you how. So the first thing you need to know about frequency distributions is there's something called a class width. I need to define that before we actually start making this up. So frequency distributions, what we have is a list of values. These are our values, our classes and the corresponding frequencies. The list of values with corresponding frequencies. With. What we're going to be doing is creating frequency distributions that are based on numbers. In a, in a second, what I'm going to do in this class is I'm going to make a frequency distribution based on our ages. Um, so we can kind of have the idea of how you make, make all these things up. So first thing, the class width. This is going to be the difference between two lower class limits. I haven't even defined that yet, but I'm going to. This is the difference between two lower class limits. Lower class limit, classes is not like this class, it's like the group, like the group of, of data that you're going to try to collect from. Like in here, do we have anyone under 18 in here? Okay, so 18 is going to be our starting point. Under here, in this class, our first group is probably going to be 18 to 20 year olds. And that'll be our first group, or 18 to 21 year olds. That'll be our first class. The class is just the first group, or the second group, or the third group. Those are all classes. The lower class limit is where the class starts. So if I have a group of 18 to 21 year olds, 18 would be my lower class limit. Does that make sense to you? That's where the class starts.
So we'll say here, uh, the smallest number belonging to a class. Well, that, there is an upper class limit also, and that's going to be well, clearly the, the highest value belonging to the class. So upper class limit, this last thing before we do, before we get into this upper. Upper class limit. Okay, I'd like to give you your steps right here on how to do this. The first thing that you need to do when you're creating your own frequency distribution like I'm about to do is determine the number of classes. This means like those groups we were just talking about. You see, you don't want to have too few groups that you can't differentiate between them, or too many groups that it, it's just too, too cumbersome and you can't tell trends. So in, in this class, I'm going to separate us, just looking around, I'm thinking I'm going to want eight classes here. So I'm going to have eight classes. So for us, in this one example, I'm going to make eight. I think that Two, more than that would, would not show trends, and I think less than that, like, do, do you ever want to have a frequency distribution with one class, do you think? With one class. Everybody would be in that class. Would that show you anything? Not so much. Would you want a class for every single person? <laughs> you, you wouldn't see any trends. You wouldn't see that. So here we have, we have a certain number of classes that you're going to determine by looking at your population that you're sampling. Okay, the second thing you got to do is you have to figure out your class width. This is the important part. Here's how you, in general, find a class width. What you do is you take your highest value in your, popula in your, your sample and you take your lowest value in your sample, and you find the difference, so that, that range, and then you divide that by the number of classes. So I'm going to say here the max value, subtract the min value, this is for your sample, and then you're going to divide by the number of classes. Okay, we're going to do that in here. Hopefully no one's worried too much about their age. Uh, are there any 17-year-olds in here? 16? 15? Okay, good. 18? 18, okay, good. Uh, do we have anyone over... Well, I know I am. How about over... 50? 45? 40? 40, do you mind? Yeah, 44. 44, okay. So 44 is our max value. <coughs> Minus 18 is our minimum value. And we're going to divide by the number of classes. How many classes did I pick here? Eight. Okay, we're divide by 8. So we do that. Uh, someone with a calculator out there, what is 44 minus 18? How much should we get? Or without a calculator, just do it. <laughs> Don't everyone talk at once. Let's go here, people. <laughs> How much? 
26, you said? I believe you. Divided by 8. Well, wait a second, Mr. Leonard. 8 doesn't go into 26 evenly. No, chances are this is probably not going to be even. In fact, we get, let's see, uh, 3.25? Yeah. Yeah, 3.25. Yeah, that's right. Your class width has to be a whole number. So here's what you're going to do. No matter what the decimal is, if you have a decimal, you are going to round upwards. If you round downwards, you're not going to have enough, enough room for everybody in your sample. You're, you'll have eight classes, but it'll stop too short, and you'll have to make another class. If you want eight classes, you need to round up. That'll cover everybody. Do you, do you see why? You can't round up. You've got to round up. I know even though it's 3.2, you go, well, that rounds to three. Well, yeah, in like algebra stuff it does, but in statistics, when we need a certain number of classes, we're going to round that up. It's going to go to four. So we, we are going to round up. So this is going to become 4. Our class width is going to be 4 for our example. So we're about ready to start making this thing. Here's how a typical frequency distribution looks. We're going to have what we're looking at. In our case, it's age. Here, and we're going to list the frequencies here. So we determine the number of classes. I determine that. In your book, it'll tell you what to use. Or on your test, it'll tell you use eight classes or use six classes. So it will tell you that. But you do need to know how to do this stuff. You'll take the max value minus the min value. That gives you a range for your sample. You divide that by the number of classes. You round it up, and that tells you your class width. Here's how you find your class width. You must have a starting point. This is uh, step three. And typically, we're going to start with the minimum value. That seems obvious. That'll include everybody. Or you could, if, if, if you want to do this, you can start with a value just below your minimum value. So I could start with 17 if I wanted to. But typically, you start with your lowest value. And so in our case, we had 18. So over here, we finally get to start filling this thing out. I'm going to put 18 right here. The next step is the most important step, because everyone can count. We can all count frequencies, but making up the classes, that's the hard part, where people get messed up. So pay close attention. If you, quite don't get, if you don't quite get it, go back on this lecture online and watch it again until you get this down. What you're going to do is, after you start with the smallest value, you're going to create the classes using the class width. Here's the key. The class width is not the difference between 18 to this number. This would be the upper class limit. The class width is the difference between this number and this number. So we're not going to do this. 